On the 30th of July 1967, a group of seven sponge divers were exploring the bottom of Rock Lake within Wisconsin. What they found, however, is more precious than sponge, or indeed golden relics. They would make a discovery so perplexing, some specialists are still struggling to explain it to this day. One of the divers, John Kennedy, stumbled across a large triangular rock formation near the middle of the lake, a structure which towered up from the deep, almost breaching the surface. He estimated that the structure which still existed above the mud was around 20 feet in diameter and around 40 feet from the edge of the lake. John collected several small fragments from around the structure, specimens which would later aid in collaborating their claims. Although rumors of an ancient pyramid existing in the lake had circulated since the 1930s, this was the first time in modern history that evidence had successfully been retrieved. It must be noted, Rock Lake is extremely ancient, and the area that is said to house an ancient pyramid has remained submerged for well over 10,000 years. Due to this geological fact, if it were not for John's physical evidence, the site may have been successfully overlooked by mainstream archaeology. Heated debate regarding John's and other claims from the 30s now raged on for several years, many mainstream archaeologists predictably rejecting the premise that a pyramid of over 10,000 years of age is resting, or more precisely, hiding, at the bottom of Rock Lake. They claim some enormous structures lay there. Native American legend records that they were built by an ancient peoples who were driven away during a flood. Although evidence was mounting, skeptics continued to insist that those involved were mistaken. It took a flight by aerial photographer Jack Latournier to silence such rhetoric. According to mainstream academia, the site simply shouldn't exist. Yet it does. It is another valuable relic of our past which tell of a history drenched in antiquity, a history we are slowly unraveling. Lake Michigan, a mysterious and enormous lake, long rumored to possess crash UFOs or possibly a secret base hidden somewhere beneath the waves. However, it is not only the extraterrestrial activity which this lake is now famous for. The use of remote sensing technology is thankfully becoming more common within modern archaeology. Scientists now routinely survey lakes for hidden structures, and Lake Michigan is no exception. At a depth of 40 feet in Grand Traverse Bay, using sonar techniques, archaeologists discovered sunken boats, cars, and even a Civil War-era pier. But among all this, they found a spectacular prehistoric ruin. When you see it in the water, you're tempted to say this can't be real, said Mark Holly, professor of underwater archaeology at Northwestern Michigan University College, who made the discovery. Clearly some form of Stonehenge. If this site could be confirmed as having been man-made, it would give credence to a theory of people building complex ancient structures within Lake Michigan, back when it was just a dry basin well over 10,000 years ago. Thankfully, during the investigation, a large rock was spotted with what many at the time suspected was an ancient illustration of a mastodon. During a conference in 2007, photos of the boulder from further investigations were displayed, these clearly showing this prehistoric drawing. However, Mark stated that experts were yet to come in and verify it beyond doubt. We couldn't believe what we were looking at, said Greg McMaster, president of the Underwater Preserve Council. Specialists, shown pictures of the boulder holding the mastodon markings, have asked for more evidence. They actually want to see it. Unfortunately, he added, experts in petroglyphs generally don't dive, so we're running into a little bit of a stumbling block there. If found to be true, the petroglyph would be well over 10,000 years old, confirming early post-Ice Age presence of both humans and mastodons in the upper Midwest. If authenticated, it would become an out-of-place artifact, like many other stone circles and other petroglyph sites, this one dated due to the age of the lake. Just who could have built the Michigan Stonehenge? How did they build it? As further investigation is undertaken, we will of course keep you posted on any future developments.
Lake Titicaca This familiar named lake is located deep within the Andes. Now sliced in two by the borders of Bolivia and Peru, it is not only the largest lake in South America, but it is also undoubtedly the most important historically that can be found anywhere on Earth. Many tales have surfaced over the years involving submerged citadels, mountains of gold relics, and vast ancient ruins scattered across the lake bed. Stories of amateur archaeologists becoming very wealthy from astonishing yet not publicly disclosed discoveries which lay beneath the waves. We found 2,000 objects and fragments, declared Christophe Delarere, a Belgian archaeologist at a ceremony in La Paz. According to Christophe, divers from his team found the objects more than 7 meters underwater off the coast of the Island of the Sun. These included 31 large golden relics. Archaeologists think these discoveries are just the beginning of something far greater, and for good reason. As time goes on, claims made a long time ago begin to appear more and more likely. According to Colonel John Blashford Snells, a notorious explorer, his extensive explorations of the lake, the surrounding ancient culture, and his resulting research, the ancient city of Tiwanaku, very near the lake shores, copied their original building knowledge from the scientists of the mysterious and legendary lost city of Atlantis. Interestingly, ancient Incan legend also corroborates his conclusions, stating that the mythical founders of their amazing empire did indeed once emerge from the lake's waters. The lake was considered the center of the cosmos by the Incan people, and they also somehow knew its shape, something we have only been able to achieve from a very high altitude. Ancient Inca legends tell that after a great flood, the creator god Viracocha emerged from Lake Titicaca. It's stated that he created, though this more than likely means they believe he restored the sun, moon, and stars. Viracocha was fair-skinned and long beard. He brought a great culture to the ancient peoples of South America. The 16th century Spanish chronicler Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa Recorded in his Historica de los Incas, a tale about Manco Capac, the first Inca. According to Inca mythology, the Inca are the direct descendants of a mythical first Inca, named Manco Capac, who emerged from one of the three openings in the mountain Tambotoco, located 33 kilometers to the south of Cusco, Peru. Manco Capac is said to have created the Incan civilization through Varacocha. Even though his figure is mentioned in several chronicles, his actual existence remains unclear. Could this original and possibly vast ancient culture still be resting upon the bottom of Lake Titicaca? Did something catastrophic occur in our very distant past which filled this lake, once a large fertile valley, filled with what we have all become familiar as the lost city of Atlantis? Lake Superior, the largest of the North American Great Lakes, it is also the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area, believed to have first been inhabited 10,000 years ago after the retreat of the last ice age. However, there exists copper mines upon many of the lake's islands, which many researchers have concluded to be prehistoric. A sophisticated array of tunnels litters the islands, or more specifically, all of North America. Scarred by ancient mine pits as deep as 150 feet, carbon-14 testing of wood remains found in sockets of copper artifacts indicated they are at least 5,700 years old, although artifacts and evidence at some sites have suggested a date far older than what has been put forward. For example, some investigators believe that the mines were not even built by humans but are the remains of a sophisticated mining operation that was once undertaken by alien visitors many thousands of years ago. Similar in scale to the ancient Carolina mica mines, mica being a material which we use in electrical components. It must be noted that all of these prehistoric mines show evidence of being abruptly abandoned. Whether this is evidence of the death of an unknown king or queen, or evidence for catastrophe is unknown. All along Lakeshore are vestiges of this once highly successful ancient operation. The most astonishing of remnants catalogued publicly has to be the enormous lump of pure copper found in 1771 
near the bank of the Ontonagon River. In 1945, it was floated downriver on a raft by a James K. Paul and was eventually appropriated by an agent of the United States government. It was then shipped to Detroit and on to Washington, where it eventually slipped into the bowels of the Smithsonian. Known as the Ontonagon Boulder, it weighs 3,708 pounds. It was apparently well known to Native Americans. According to the Keweenaw Bay Indian community, the boulder was used by tribe members to make offerings to its manito, or spirit, to seek improvement in their health and well-being. Just how old is the Ontonagon boulder, or indeed, the mine from which it came? Although many would like you to believe the mines are less than 5,000 years of age, we think many factors surrounding them suggest that they are far older than that.